Hello, this is my voice. These are my hands. This is my trusty Synthstrom Deluge. And here are some notes on things I'd like to talk about today. Basically, I wanted to do a video answering some questions about the community firmware that I've seen on places like the Deluge Facebook group. Um, to start, you'll hear some music behind me as I talk that's been made on the Deluge, uh, still a work in progress using some of the community features. So maybe that'll get released someday, who knows? Also, I'm not a community developer. I'm not a coder. I just bug them on the Discord and try to test things where I can. Uh, I use my Deluge a lot, so I like to stay on top of all the features. Uh, I did talk to the devs about doing this video, and it seemed like a good idea. So let's see how that works out for everyone. Um, a couple caveats right off the top is uh, you'll notice I'm on the seven segment display, uh, which should tell you right away that the community firmware works great on the older display. So don't even worry about it. Join in. Uh, also, if you're concerned about your bootloader, because you've heard that word a lot, um, I'll put a link in the description about how to how to figure out what bootloader you're on and how to update it. Long story short, I wouldn't worry about it. This is a super old Deluge, maybe six years old. I had the oldest bootloader possible, the riskiest one, never had an issue, updated it very easily, still have never had an issue. It really only matters if you're popping the card out constantly because you're a developer trying experimental firmware all the time. Um, but just in case, there's a link in the description and you can go over all that. And finally, before we get really going, just a note, a reminder that the Deluge community developers are all volunteers. This is a volunteer-based force. Uh, they're doing this in their free time, on breaks, whatever, uh, because they love it and they want to make this better. So in terms of you know why is this feature not there or who's working on my request or whatever, just to reiterate off the top, it's a volunteer-based workforce that are doing things that they're excited about when they have time. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go forward. One thing I'd like to touch on right away is the definition of the term stable, as depending on if you're a developer or a user like me, you may use that differently, or you may not understand that someone else is using it differently. So on the Facebook group, you'll hear people ask about if a feature is stable or a firmware is stable, and sometimes they mean, uh, is it going to crash? Are there bugs? Can I use it live without issues? But a developer may use that term to say a feature, a firmware is stable, meaning that it is not going to change anymore. It's locked in. The features that are on that firmware will always be there. They're not going to get removed from you all of a sudden or change drastically so you don't recognize them. So when a firmware is stable, those features aren't going anywhere. They may get approved upon, but they're not going to be just removed in the next firmware. So you, you can use them live uh, without worrying about them changing on you. So that's just a distinction. In general, um, the community firmware should be as bug-free and crash-free as the official Synthstrom firmware. Certainly the, the, the stable community release, whatever is the latest one top of that page, you should not have to worry about any bugs any more than you would with the uh, Synthstrom official firmware. And let's quickly touch on performance, as that's something that comes up a lot. Um, people ask, you know, is the community firmware as capable uh, in comparison to the Synthstrom Audible firmware when it comes to things like CPU and number of voices, dropouts, things like that. Um, personally, I can say that for my workflow, the community firmware has taken care of any issues I used to have on official. I no longer have crashes, and, and if anything, it's getting better and better all the time. I do long three-hour improv sets with my Deluge on community firmware and never have any worries at all. When I did used to have some crashes and things, now everyone's workflow is different, as I've said. So some people will say, well, I have a song that it, it used to be fine on official, but now I'm getting voice dropouts on community. I would say that both community and official do what's called culling. When the CPU hits its limit, certain voices might get cut or culled. Um, and it's just when and where that happens is different. So community, they're always revising how that happens and trying to make it as nuanced as possible. In fact, in future firmwares that are coming out soon, um, there are indications of you hitting the CPU or being close to maxing out the CPU so you know kind of what to expect. Um, and it's always being worked on. So the idea of trying to trying to call something silently and trying to avoid any clicks or overt dropouts is something that's always on the community's mind and it's just getting better and better. So personally, performance as well is not a worry for me and I would say just dive in. Okay, let's quickly go through the four types of firmware that you can currently get, starting obviously with uh, the Synthstrom Audible official firmware. 
that's the one that would have come with your deluge at some point probably uh and as of last release i believe that was at 4.14 and that unified the two displays and had some bug bug fixes if i recall um now that firmware the Synstrom Audible official firmware is very stable in terms of features are locked, nothing is going anywhere. If there's a next release, those features will still be there. If anything, they would just do some bug fixes. And actually, I'll put some quotes from the newsletter just to, to confirm that, but basically, it sounds like they are maintaining the official firmware with bug fixes, uh, and they will support the official firmware but I wouldn't expect a lot of new development in terms of features on the official firmware. Uh, and what they've said about the community firmware is they're so impressed with how quickly things went with the community firmware that it almost doesn't make sense anymore to try to port any community features back to official. Uh, it's just too far, it's, it's, development has gone too far. Uh, the architecture is different, so much has been changed. They're basically encouraging you to dive into community if you want these new features. So, uh, you know, that's official firmware. Now we can get into the community firmware, which is what we're all here for. So on that page I linked to earlier, the firmware closest to the top is going to be the latest stable community release. So at the time of this video, that is 1.0.1 .1 Amadeus. And that's the one that gave you things like grid view and automation view. Uh, so that's a very stable firmware. It's been put through the ringer in terms of testing and also the stability of those features. They're not going anywhere. That is feature locked. Anything that's on that firmware is now supported as the community features going forward with things being added to them, but nothing should be taken away. You can rely on those features and everything's been tested really well and they're just gonna get improved upon. At the time of this video, below that Amadeus release, there's a 1.1 Beethoven beta. Now when you see a beta, that means it's very close to being the next stable release. Uh, in fact, I think as I'm recording this video, the devs are putting that beta into release candidate status, meaning it is so close, they're just going to keep testing it a little bit, polish it a little bit, and it will become the one at the top of that page. So soon 1.1 will be at the top of that page, and there might be a 1.2 beta below it, but essentially a beta means you can have those features. If you want to jump ahead of the queue a little bit, you can get those features. Uh, they're, they're, they won't change. If you download that beta today and then you download it again next week, those features should still be stable and still be there. It's just bug fixes that will have changed in that release at this point, unless there's something really drastic, but they would have found it by now. And once a beta is ready, it's basically pretty stable. It's just about the polish of user testing and making sure all those little bugs are ironed out, but the features should be locked in. Another thing you'll see on that page is a change log under that beta that now shows you kind of what's, what was worked on in that release only. So you don't have to necessarily go through all the list every time. Uh, it just shows you these are the things that are added in 1.1, which is very useful because 1.1 has some great features, first of all. I mean, you're getting things like performance view and some CPU monitoring, like I mentioned before. So there's lots of fun stuff and you can check that change log to see what was added. Maybe, maybe you're not ready to jump into the beta yet, but you wanna know what's coming or maybe you wanna know what's coming. So you can just jump ahead and grab that beta because it's gonna be very stable and probably not many bugs at this point. Below that, you get to the nightly firmware, which is arguably the most exciting, but definitely the most subject to change, the least stable as well. Uh, anything there is highly mutable, uh, always being worked on. So a feature that's there tonight might not be there tomorrow if you grab the next nightly, or it might be changed completely. So things like that DX7 emulator that was shared on Facebook last week and everyone got excited about, that's currently in the nightly firmware because it's still being refined. The UI is still being worked on. So if you were to grab that now and rely on it, then in a month when you grab the next nightly or whatever beta is available then, it might not look the same and you might have to relearn it or it might be gone because it conflicted with another feature. But you know, nightly is where you go to test things that are on the bleeding edge. It's fun, there's crazy stuff happening, but some stuff, ends up changing a lot and before it gets to a proper stable release. But it is still very cool, very fun if you wanna, if you wanna jump in and see what the community is doing. Um, and you can always, like I go back and forth all the time between nightly and beta and stable release often. So you don't have to stick with one track, you can jump back and forth as you need to. And one, one little asterisk or bonus, 
If you're a power user, you probably already know that you can go to an individual pull request in GitHub and grab a firmware file to test from there if you're looking for something that's even too new to be in the nightly. But if you're that level of power user, you probably didn't need the rest of this video and you're not listening right now. Which takes me to how do you get involved or where do you go if you want to log a bug or you want to see what's going on? So. Uh, GitHub is where the development is done. That's where you can log issues or follow along with a particular one if you're really interested in, in the development of a certain feature. Um, but generally, Discord as well is, is a great place. Like that, There's a Discord link on the bottom of that page I linked to. Great community, and you can talk to the devs. You can set up a little... There's a forum where you can create your own little idea and see what people think about it and, and refine it and discuss it. So there's all types of, of opportunities to kind of get involved if you want to put forth ideas and also learn how to test and grab things. GitHub can be daunting at first, but basically once you, once you create an account, you just need to know how to create an issue. And you, there's a form that you can fill out and that's where you log your bug and that's how you test in the community and get involved. Um, so there's also uh, a Patreon for the developers. And again, I'm not a developer. Uh, I have nothing to do with the Patreon or, or the coding specific. But if you want to support the dev initiative, you can do that via the Patreon that I'll link to in the description. Um, my understanding from the devs is any money that has been raised from the Patreon so far has really gone to testing equipment and expenses. No one's getting paid. Developers aren't sitting here making bank because everyone's giving them a dollar a month to, to support the dev, Deluge development. Um, it'd be great if, if developers were able to make a living making cool features for the Deluge. But basically, it's, you know, it's a place to support the community and then it helps them get some testing equipment. Um, and, you know, if you are a Patreon subscriber, that doesn't put your feature request to the top of any line. There is no there is no real queue. It's more, like I said, it's all volunteers. There's no demands. It's all volunteers doing things that they're passionate about and, and working on things they're excited about for the community and that excite them as developers and users of the Deluge. Because remember, they, they all started as Deluge users like you and I. They just happen to have this skill set that lets them build upon the, the framework. So it's a really cool thing. Sinstrom was uh, very uh, adventurous and, and forward thinking to open source this stuff as most companies won't do that. So, you know, that's, it's, it's a wonderful era of deluge ownership, I would say, as someone who's had one for like six years. Uh, in any case, hopefully this has been useful to you. Um, I'm Bay Mud. You can hear my music wherever you listen to music. Uh, a lot of it, if not 99% of it, is made on the deluge. So give it a listen. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll do more feature videos coming up soon for 1.1 is coming very soon with some really cool features. So hopefully I'll get into that a little bit. Otherwise, I'm just going to be having fun making music on my deluge.